Yes, finally, Themes has come to Replit. You can now choose your own theme for use in the general use of Replit, but also for your coding endeavors. Let's find out how that's going to work. From the main hamburger menu, we're going to pick Themes. And we're straight into the theme picker. If you would like to explore the themes, you've got the option of searching, filtering by author, by color, or by mode. Let's have a look and see if we can pick one we like. Well, I quite like this one from Bardia with Apple Dark Mode. So we can see a preview of it, as you see here, in a few languages of our choice, and we can click Use, and straight away that theme is turned on. If I go and create any REPL now in any language, those theming conventions are applied to the code I'm writing, which looks pretty cool. Why don't you go and grab a theme, change it to something radical, come back here and put in a few lines of Python. Nothing crazy, maybe a loop, maybe a few inputs and a print, but let's see what you can get done in your theme of choice. Of course, one of the best parts about this is that you can preview the themes in different languages. If JavaScript isn't your bag, well, let's take a look at Python. Not a fan of Python? Let's have a look at Java or C++ or HTML and CSS. We can see exactly what these themes are going to look like before we need to turn them on. And you can even preview how they will look in your general interface by hitting that preview button. And if you're not keen, exit the preview. There are even some themes that are probably not the sort of thing I'd want to use on a regular basis. If you end up picking a theme that you're not happy with, maybe for some reason it's got Comic Sans as your default coding font, Ugh, making me cold just thinking about it, then you can turn back to your original theme very, very quickly, simply by clicking the hamburger button and clicking the original theme switcher from light to dark modes. This will restore the default Replit theme. One nice thing as well is if there's a theme that you really like that maybe you would have spent time building, but actually you're glad it's there, such as this one, you can go and tip the creator with a number of cycles. There are some basic options there, and to tip, all you need to do is click a button, and as long as you've got enough cycles, that will get transferred to the user for their stellar work. It's well worth tipping people who are building these things because really, really good templates deserve a bit of love. So how do you get started making your own theme? Well, it's pretty easy. We're gonna click the Create Theme button, and we'll be prompted, first of all, to give it a title, a description, and tell us whether it's meant for light or dark mode. Once created, we've got a bunch of options where we can go and pick the colors for each of the elements. The global theme is what will change the Replit UI, and the code syntax theme is what will change the coding. You simply click the color, and you can pick the color from a color picker, or click the drop-down menu to select entering hex color values or other types of colors. You can see as I'm picking my colors here, the UI is changing, and with my code syntax, I can pick different options, and you can see those changes happening immediately in the live preview. Of course, you can change that to anything you want. If you're not sure exactly which part of the code is which, you can actually click on the part of the code. It'll tell you what category that is, and you can change it directly from the preview, which is pretty cool as well. And when you're happy, you can apply the theme for yourself, or you can publish it, and publishing it makes it available on the theme picker and searchable by other Replit users. Maybe you'll get some tips for your fantastic theming work. Of course, most people want to be converting a theme they're currently using elsewhere, maybe in VS Code. Well, that is unbelievably simple in Replit Themes Editor. When you're building your theme, when you click the color, there is an eyedropper. The eyedropper will work on any part of your screen user interface. So if we click it, we can take our eyedropper over to VS Code, click on the item we want to take the color from, and it immediately inherits it. And this is true even for your code syntax and your highlights there. So it makes it immensely easy to port a theme from VS Code or anywhere else. For instance, if you took 100 days of code, you'll know the graphics that we made always had a certain theme, and that's nothing really to do with the color coding that we were using in Replit at the time. Well, I can go and create a 100 days of code theme now and import the colors from my original diagrams so that code that I show in demonstrations can match the plans we already had. The theme creator is fantastic and really, really extensible. Your challenge today is to go and build a theme of your choice. Port something from an existing editor that you like using or build something completely wacky or crazy. Don't forget to publish it and share it with anybody else and hopefully somebody will love it enough to 
tip you a few cycles.